the decision from the Supreme Court that all the political junkies were waiting for finally came down today. It's the ruling on the Hobby Lobby contraception mandate. So first, let me give you the backstory on this, and then I'll go into the decision and what this means. So under Obamacare, insurance companies uh, have to cover birth control like it's any other medication. So for example, insurance companies would have to cover, you know, certain blood pressure medications or antibiotics or Viagra, right? Viagra, it hasn't been made into a political issue. That's for old men to get their little scrawny dicks hard. But uh, when it comes to birth control, apparently this is a political issue. Uh, it was part of Obamacare, and the conservatives said, No! How dare you do that? You're infringing on our religious liberty. And uh, the companies that sued were owned by evangelical Christians like Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Wood Specialties. They didn't like the fact that uh, Obamacare made it so that these insurance policies cover birth control for people even within their own uh, companies. So they sued to try to strike down that provision under the guise of, well, this is violating our religious liberty. So in a 5-4 decision, the court sided with Hobby Lobby and struck down the contraception mandate. Justice Ginsburg wrote an absolutely scathing rebuttal uh, dissenting in this. I suggest you read it if you haven't yet. I mean, she really goes to work and she does a great job talking about how she has a great quote about how the Supreme Court just turned into a minefield or something like that. Like they're now walking on a minefield. And she's right. They have opened Pandora's box now to a theocratic anarchy system. Okay? Because think about what this implies. Now we have companies that, you know, if they're Christian-owned, they say, well, birth control is against my beliefs, so I'm going to impose my beliefs on my workers. But wait, 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 those are your beliefs. Those aren't your workers' beliefs. Now, they argue, but yeah, but we're paying for it. If it's birth control and the worker is working for me, then we are paying for it technically. But that's not true. you got to think about it like this. If, somebody, if you're working for somebody... Well, then, the money that they give you, you earned that money. It's not their money. You actually earned it through your labor. So, essentially, it's the same thing for, a, you know, a health insurance package. If you're working and one of the things that you get is health insurance, that's yours. They're not giving that to you. It's not theirs and then they're being kind enough to give it to you. No, no, no. You earn that. That's part of your package for working for them. Your labor, in exchange, gets money and a benefits package and other things. So if one of those things is health insurance, what this ruling does is it makes it so that the uh, business owners can get in between a woman and her doctor. Now, let's stop and think about the irony of that for a second. What was the main argument that conservatives used against Obamacare? They pretended like, well, this is the government getting in between you and your doctor. Oh, it's so terrible. The last thing we would want is some uh, outside force, some independent party getting in between you and your doctor. Well, that would be big government, and that would be terrible. That would be tyrannical. But wait, wait, wait. Now you like the idea of a, a tyrannical independent force getting in between you and your doctor? Oh, that's right. When it's a business, you like it. And especially when it's an evangelical Christian business that is forcing their beliefs on these poor women. And then also, let me throw out there, a lot of people don't know this, birth control isn't just used for fucking. Okay, there's a lot of actual medicinal uses for it. So, for example, one thing is if a woman has cysts on her ovaries, which can be very painful, okay, we all know what cysts are, right? Basically deep-rooted pimples, for lack of a better term. If you have that on your ovaries, which is hurts a lot, it's a medical condition... Well, you know what fixes that? Birth control. But what this Hobby Lobby decision does is it says unilaterally, no, no, we're not going to cover birth control. Under no circumstances. And again, I love the arrogance of the owners, because the owners think, well, we don't want our workers to get uh, health insurance, uh, uh, I'm sorry, birth control through health insurance because it disagrees with our belief system. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. This is about the employee and her doctor, and you want to get in between them. So you have to realize uh, the Pandora's box that has been opened now. What's to stop any business from claiming that they can force their worker, workers to do X, Y, or Z simply because they claim it's their religion? I mean, think about with uh, Muslim-owned businesses, for example. Why can't they tell their female workers now, you know what, 
throw on a hijab. Oh, you're not Muslim? I don't care. You work for me, throw on a hijab, and that's the end of the conversation. Why is that protected by religious liberty? Why is it what the owner is forcing the employee to do? Where are the rights of the employee? Where are the rights of the individual? Again, you've legalized a theocratic tyranny system. Okay, and we could give examples for days here. I mean, what's to stop somebody from claiming, since you've opened this Pandora's box, what's to stop somebody from saying, well, um, we don't want to hire blacks. Because our religion, I mean, look, we don't, we don't view them as equal according to our religion. The Bible bans interracial marriage. What if it's a chapel or a church and they say, we don't want to marry black people. We don't want to marry black and white people. It says in the Bible, you're, you have to marry within your tribe, which means race. That's the word that they used back then. We don't want to marry white and black people. It's a, it's a genuinely held religious belief. Who are you to tell me I can't do that? Think about uh, the story we covered on Friday. There was a guy who's a fucking grand wizard of the KKK. He got fired from his neighborhood watch job. And he said, no, no, you're not allowed to do that because you're infringing on my religious liberty because my belief in racism is based on religion. So you can't fire me because I'm racist. Wait, so you want to be a fucking neighborhood watchman and you want to be overtly and openly religious. And then you're hiding behind, oh, well, it's just my religious belief. So uh, you want to be openly racist and have minority lives, their decisions made about their life in your hands. That's insane, right? But with a decision like this, their argument is, <clears throat> no, that's not insane. Why is that insane? If it's a genuinely held religious belief... You know, who who cares? It, you, I mean, we don't want we don't want the government to infringe upon uh, people's religious beliefs. I mean, that would be wrong. But think about what you're doing. That's not what you're doing. In in essence, you are bending over backwards to accommodate religion in ridiculous ways. When you uh, allow decisions to be made about women's lady parts by a, a business owner, and by the way, they don't own you. If you work at a business, they don't own you. You're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want on your time off, or is that gone too? Or can uh, now, because we opened Pandora's box, can they say, well, look, I, we're a religious uh, company, therefore, we want everybody that works for us, you can't eat shellfish, because that's in the Bible, you can't eat pork, um, we need you to purify yourself. The men need to grow out their beards and let their hair grow because that's in the Bible too. You can't cut your hair or anything. If you have piercings, take them out. If you have tattoos, you got to get them laser removed. Look, the, these things are in the Bible. If somebody is an actual fundamentalist, they can say, no, no, this is a genuine religious belief and I can prove it. It's in my holy book. And the Supreme Court says, you're right. Yeah. You can force people to do whatever the fuck you want to do because we have legalized theocratic tyranny and theocratic anarchy. Basically, these businesses are functioning as little religious tyrannies now. They could tell you to do whatever and then hide behind the idea of religion. For fuck's sake, man, just wait. Wait until that first case comes down when a boss fucks their employee, has sex with them, and then says, what, what, what? No, it's in my religion. She has to be subservient to me. You think that's not going to happen? You think that case isn't going to come? Oh, I guarantee you it's going to come. All these laws on the books about, you know about sexual harassment and assault and how there's a position of power in the boss and they can't have sex with their employee. No, no, that, that violates my religious liberty. I want to uh, fuck my worker. She's, it, are you kidding me? She's got to be subservient to me under my religion. Are you telling me that my religious belief isn't sincerely held? Well, that's ridiculous, man. You got to rule uh, on my side. Who are you to tell me what my genuine held religious beliefs are and aren't? They've opened Pandora's box. Now, uh, the very last part of the article about this in Raw Story says, quote, I love this, the decision covers only the contraceptive mandate and does not necessarily apply to other insurance mandates, such as blood transfusions or vaccinations if they conflict with an employer's religious belief. Notice what the Supreme Court tried to do there, okay? This is an admittance that they're wrong. Because what are they saying? They're going, actually, um, <clears throat> on the issue of blood transfusions or vaccinations or modern other forms of modern medicine, the employer's religious belief cannot uh, tell an employee, uh, sorry, our, the insurance plan isn't going to cover vaccinations or uh, any other you know, form of medical treatment. Now, why did they do that? Because they know that they're wrong. They know that they've opened Pandora's box. And they know 
that they've now made it so that you'll have fundamentalist communities all around the U.S. claiming religious liberty to get away with all types of insane shit like denying vaccinations. But here's the problem, man. You can't thread the needle like that. Because that your argument isn't logically consistent. See, what, you, what they're trying to say is, well, you're violating religious liberty because you're not allowing the owner to carry out their sincerely held religious beliefs. But then they're turning around and saying, but other examples of this, those are illegitimate. And those, aren't, uh, those don't count as sincerely held religious beliefs. But that's not true! Because there are sincerely held religious beliefs against vaccination, against interracial marriage, against gay people. The list goes on and on. You can't just pick one and say, no, this one, uh, this one we're going to allow you to hide behind religious liberty, liberty. That one you're not allowed to hide behind religious liberty. And guess what? Any other court would tear this down. Because they're not all as stupid as this court. They're all going to go, oh, I see, we're being gigantic hypocrites and we're contradicting ourselves. But this court, in their infinite stupidity decided, well, no, you can hide behind religious liberty and get in between a woman and her health insurance company and her doctor and say, we're going to tell you what you can and cannot put in your body when it comes to contraception.